Uh, welcome to Hangover Airbrush. Uh, I'm your host for today, Keanu Reeves. Today I want to talk about air compressors. When you're first starting out, there's a couple different things, a couple different ways that we can get air for our airbrush. The cheap airbrush compressors are usually just that. They're usually just cheap. In order to figure out which air compressor you need, you need to figure out the demand for your supply is. If all you're ever going to use is an airbrush, you'd probably be able to get away with a small little pancake compressor. Uh, they're a little bit noisier than an airbrush compressor, but they keep up easily. One of the key things about making sure your compressor is adequate is what, when you're using it, it should cycle off. It should be able to recover fast enough to turn itself off while you're using it. That's how you know you have the right size compressor, or at least you know big enough for what you're doing. You don't need to go overkill. You don't need to go get a five horse, uh, 60 gallon corner of your garage kind of thing. That's not necessary at all, unless, uh, you plan on growing up, so to speak, and you know painting a full car. If if that's what you plan on doing, then you're going to need quite a big compressor. I mean, you're talking 12 CFMs, 14 CFMs, uh, and that's that's big. For general purpose airbrush, if you get a small two or three gallon compressor uh, that, that that's able to deliver four or five CFMs um, at at least 60 psi, then uh, then you'll be doing okay. Uh, in fact, uh, the little pancake compressor in my setup, which is my daily driver, um, that's what I use all the time, and it's actually big enough to where I can use this mini HVLP touch-up gun and, and shoot clear through it. Uh, so when my work is finished, I usually use a two-part, a 2K urethane clear, and this is the uh, the old Harbor Freight I've actually gotten pretty decent results from. It's not going to drive a touch-up gun all day long. you got to listen to your compressor and kind of work around um, your compressor's willpower, so to speak. If you want to paint a whole car and you want to use a, a, a and you want to use a, a you know a, a full size HVLP, you're going to need a substantial compressor. This is the one that I use. It's gas powered. Uh, that makes me portable so I can go wherever I want on uh, a couple gallons of unleaded and I can spray whatever I want wherever I want. Now how do you know that you have the right size compressor for what you want? Like I said before, if your compressor is running non-stop and it doesn't shut off, that's an indication that you're straining your air compressor and you're not getting the supply that you need. Now the problem with that isn't that your electric bill is going to go up through the roof. The problem is that you're not getting the proper air supply to atomize the paint. Uh, so you're going to end up with real grainy or spotty work. Or if you're trying to shoot a clear or something like that, you're going to end up with orange peel or worse, adhesion problems. The quiet air compressor I got was uh, one of those $100 Walmart things. I had to have a compressor. It was within my price range, so I got that. And uh, at lower, lower pressures, it doesn't seem to do too bad, but it kicks on and it runs nonstop. And then if you don't dilute your paint or if you try to use it straight out of the bottle, or if you're doing a big area and you're trying to cover a whole lot of area with your airbrush, uh, you might have the same problems with this compressor that I've had, which is that it runs more or less nonstop until the point where it gets hot and it just won't kick on anymore. And the fan just the fan runs incessantly. Uh, that's no good for airbrush. I don't like to mix up paint, spray for a couple minutes, and then let the paint cure in a pot. So uh, I know with water-based paints, paint curing in the pot isn't really an issue, even though it does seem like the fresher the paint is, the better it flows in the, uh, in the airbrush. 
Um, but if you're going to use uh, like urethane or lacquers or something like that, you definitely don't want uh, want your paint to kick off. Um, pot life is a concern. So you definitely don't want an El Cheapo compressor that's not going to keep up with your spraying duties. Now here's my setup. I have a pancake compressor, which has a short length of hose to it. The hose is meant to be a vibration reducer. My regulator is not mounted to the compressor. That's why, because I want the vibration to go into the rubber and not into the regulator in the water trap. Uh, the regulator, I usually set my first regulator to 90 PSI. And all that does is that lets 90 PSI into my air line. The second thing that the air travels through is the water separator. This is going to keep water out of the air line. It's going to keep dirt out of the air line. And if there's any oil in the system or stuff like that, it's going to filter that out as well. That's why it is where it is in the setup. Uh, you also notice that it has a drain at the bottom. So on the high humidity days or raining outside or the dew point's very high, uh, I can drain the water out. Then it goes into a 100 foot air line where I pipe it into the house. Once it's in the house, I've teed it off and half of that goes into the small compressor and I use that as a storage tank, as a buffer tank because I have so much air line. From there it goes into a secondary regulator where I control the actual air pressure that I want to run at my airbrush. Uh, generally speaking, uh, anywhere between 25, which I, at times, special occasions, I'll go down, I'll dip down as low as 12 PSI and as high as 4550. So anywhere within that range, I know that really helps you out. It narrows it down. Um, but every paint, every day is different. And we just got to learn to adapt. That's not what I'm talking about today. From, uh, from the secondary regulator, it goes through a secondary uh, particulate filter. And you can get these things anywhere. Uh, you can get them at Napa. I know they sell them at Napa. Harbor Freight sells them for cheap. They are consumable, so they won't last indefinitely. After you've sprayed a couple projects with it, pitch it. Uh, and by a couple projects, I mean six, eight months. Unless you're going to use a thing, you know, every day, then uh, you, you're probably looking at maybe every other month. Um, with some, you know, depending on how filthy your air is. I have a primary air filter, which gets most of the crap out of the airline. So... I don't change mine very often. From there, it goes into the airbrush airline and to the airbrush. And uh, this system works really well for me. I, I like the fact that the compressor's outside. I can do my tutorials and my videos in my studio without having a compressor noise. If I feel the need to airbrush at 3 o'clock in the morning, no two-year-olds are woken up. Canned air. You've seen them right next to the airbrushes at the little hobby store that we've all been to, you see the little uh, the cans of air. Avoid them. Avoid them at all costs. In the long run, that's going to cost you more money than what it's worth. When you're trying to cover a large area, the can will freeze on you. And uh, when it does that, it's as good as not having any air at all. Uh, so then you got to wait for the can to uh, warm back up before your pressure is there again. And uh, the pressure isn't consistent. Through the, the, the initial charge that the can has and through the entire discharging process, the pressure varies. And it's, it's almost impossible to get any kind of good quality results from uh, one of those pressure cans. So, you know, stay away from those. I know this because when I first started out, when I was 16 years old, that's what I had, that's what I used. And that's what I could afford. But stay away from them. They're, they're nothing but a headache. Experience, uh, experience has told me that. If you have any questions about a compressor, uh, use the comment section below. Don't ask me about specific compressors. I'm not going to make any recommendations over Craftsman versus Husky versus Walmart, Harbor Freight, whatever. If you want to know about a specific compressor, you're better off doing a review search on the model number, um, use Google or Yahoo as your search tool and then uh, just read the reviews. If you have questions about what items you need in your air supply system, then uh, I'll be more than happy to tell you what I know. And that's, uh, that's all I can think about. 
As far as compressors go, 